Okay, uh, thanks everybody for taking the time to join this particular webinar on AWS Certification Insider Tips. Uh, we are all well aware of AWS Cloud Certifications playing a very pivotal role in, you know, an IT professional's life. Uh, reason being they validate expertise in Amazon Web Services. Now, these particular certifications enhance your career opportunities by confirming practical skills and knowledge. So in a dynamic industry, you know, such as IT, staying certified or keeping up with latest technologies is a must, right? And this would foster job security and credibility. Not just that, employers these days value AWS certifications making them a key asset for career growth and success in the ever-expanding field of cloud computing. Today in this particular webinar, we have a very distinguished speaker, Shruti Mantri, who comes with a rich background in cloud computing. As a seasoned software architect at MoveWorks, our speaker Shruti has honed skills in designing robust and scalable systems. With prior roles as an associate architect at Mintra and an SDE2 at Amazon, she has spearheaded transformative projects, including leading a migration at Amazon from Java to Datapath and pioneering the Amazon Restaurants project. So let's you know, glean insights from her particular ex extensive experience. And as, as Shruti continues, and then she will be sharing very valuable perspectives on how to navigate the AWS certification landscape. So this particular webinar is divided into a couple of parts. We'd start with an overview of AWS cloud practitioner, what goes into an AWS cloud practitioner basic certification, and then a couple of key concepts. Right. And then the next segment would be a set of questions. I'll, I'll launch a particular poll. And then the third segment would be about, you know, what we do, Project Pro and, and some of the projects that we have. And uh, Shruti is going to talk about, you know, how you can basically crack this particular certification with the help of our projects. So, yeah. And, and the last segment would be questions. We'd be happy to take in any number of questions within a you know stipulated time, of course. Uh, yeah, without you know me, so without any further ado, let's just go ahead and take over. I mean, Shruti, please take over, and the virtual stage is all yours. Sure. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you, Shraddha, for the introduction, and let us start. So. Uh, so we'll firstly understand what all AWS certifications are, and we would basically be covering the cloud practitioner certification. So if you would have seen, there are a lot of LinkedIn posts have completed this certification, and especially they are uh, fancy certifications. And one of the most valued ones in the industry are the AWS cloud related certifications which could be AWS Cloud Practitioner, AWS Solutions Architect, and so on. So uh, one of the first certifications in your journey of AWS certifications is the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification. And we did want to cover that because this is what sets you on the journey of certifications. So there are many people who are like, okay, I want to do some certifications, but I don't know how to go about it. Uh, also like, okay, if you know how to go about it also, you go through the syllabus and you find it too overwhelming and you don't get enough confidence that you, are you ready for the certification or not? So in this particular webinar, I'll walk you through, uh, how you can start this journey, how you can start with the first certification, which is the cloud practitioner certification, what it takes to be ready and what it takes to appear for the certification exam and get yourself certified. Right, and in order to prepare yourself and get that confidence, how Project Pro projects can help you in this journey. So let us begin. Uh, this is something which I've already covered. We will go to this link, which is the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam link. I've already opened it over here. When you click that link, you would get this particular page, which talks about 
the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And it says that, okay, this is a foundational category. This is a 90 minutes exam having 65 questions. Uh, most of them are like single choice and few are multiple response. Uh, so it's a category, it's a mix of both. All of them are multi-choice. In some questions, one of the four options is the correct answer. In some other questions, there are multiple answers out of those four options. Okay. Uh, cost is 100 USD. And then you have to take this, uh, you can take this in person also. So there are some centers uh, in different countries, in different cities, where you can go and give it by going there in person to the center, or you can even go it, uh, give it online by registering and setting up your Pearson view. So when you uh, register for the exam, it will guide you how to set up your laptops or your personal computers for this particular testing. Right, and there are different languages in which this particular exam is conducted. So these are the different languages which are mentioned over here. And if you go about it, so now this is all the basic about what, uh, what are the metadata or nitty gritties about this exam. But uh, the main question is, what is the syllabus of the exam, right? So if you go down, you will also find some more FAQs, which I am not covering at this point in time. Only one thing which I would like to highlight is, uh, once this certificate is there, there are many more certificates uh, which are mentioned below, and you could just go in training and certification, and you would see many more certificates. But in your journey of AWS certification, Cloud Practitioner is the first certification that most of the people generally start with, start their certification journey with. So now comes the syllabus of the exam. For that, they have this prepare for the exam and which says that, okay, you can do all of this. One of the very good material that AWS provides is something in AWS Skill Builder. You can go through this and you will have this Skill Builder. And this is like a certification course. I have completed this course. So you see when I've logged in, I get this download your certificate. So I completed this long time back, uh, but this is a complete course. So what I will do is I'll open it in an incognito mode. And this is how your screen will appear when you sign in. Uh, you can enroll here. You can log in using, uh, you can create one uh, user. It would just guide you for that sign in into AWS Skill Builder, and then it would say, okay, create an account. And this is free of cost. So if you can see, it's a free course uh, given, it's a four hours course given by AWS. Now, if I go in deep, it uh, so these are all the different videos that are present over there. So let me just show you over here. I have opened it a little uh, inside. You get the start course. And this course contains um the introductory part the actual videos containing the material and then followed by a summary and a quiz this is the pattern which is followed across all the modules now let us see the syllabus okay we'll go through this what all uh, the video topics are and we will see what all this particular course covers so it starts with introduction to webs different web services or amazon web services what the long form of AWS is, and hence this is an introduction to AWS. It has one video on cloud computing, and then comes compute in the cloud where they touch upon EC2 web service, followed by elastic load balancing, which wherein they would cover some service like EBS or some other service, and then messaging and queuing, so SQS or something would get covered here. And then there is global infrastructure, which says how the data structure, data center of AWS is, uh, what is meant by edge location, uh, how their availability, availability zones, their regions, all of them are maintained. What does that mean? Uh, how to provision AWS resources. Then comes the networking part, wherein they cover subnets, access control list, which is all a part of AWS service called as VPC that is virtual private cloud. And uh, then you have subnets and all of it within that service itself, like Route 53, DNS, all of it would be covered under networking. Then you have uh, this elastic block store. 
sorry so the load balancing was elb elastic load balancing uh, ebs is the elastic block store then you have s3 simple storage service which is the distributed file system but then you might have heard of s3 but then there is one more service called efs elastic file system uh, then you have databases like rds rds in itself has a couple of different databases like aurora mysql postgres then there is no sql database by amazon called as dynamodb then there is redshift then there is database migration service which is also called as dms by its abbreviation and there are as you see additional database services then there comes the security part of it so a lot of uh, services which are related to security this would cover iam this would cover some service called as aws organizations and and many more here in compliance there are a couple of services which uh, which if you look at this uh, uh, this course you would realize oh this is something which i have not even heard of and then in monitoring and analytics there is cloudwatch cloud trail trusted advisor and then pricing related aws services which is aws billing aws cost explorer budgets and so many more so long story short if you see this particular uh, cloud practitioner exam requires you to have knowledge of different aws services uh, that are provided by the aws cloud provider now you would say there are so many services and how do i go about learning about them so one option is clearly going through this four hour course but would that su suffice you will learn about all these types of different services and it would take you a lot of revisions to actually become really good at knowing all of them because what would happen so sometimes let's say let's say we take pricing co component right you would go through okay this is aws budget service this is aws cost explorer service aws support plan service you learn about it come the next day and then you would when a question is asked around okay i want to see uh my uh forecast of next month's bill or of the bill that i would get next year based on uh whatever using usage that i have for this year and you would be sub and then you would be in confusion whether it was aws budgets or cost explorer support plans all of them sounds very much similar in nature so that becomes a main question how do you gain confidence that okay which service is meant for what purpose so that is what makes this certification a little difficult one so this is what the AWS Cloud Practitioner Essentials course is about. And as you see, the syllabus is pretty vast. And AWS really did a good job of covering all of it in four hours. But yeah, so we have with this, we have covered what all AWS Cloud Practitioner exam is all about. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put in the chat section. Um, Shraddha, you want to put out some polling questions? Sure. Uh, Shruti, I'll launch the poll and then so there are three questions and it's a multiple choice answer. Uh, post that, Shruti will, you know, give an assessment. She'll make an assessment of the poll, basically. So, yeah, I've launched the poll. So, I urge all of you to answer these questions. Give so we'll spend the next five minutes, you go through the question, go through the options and select the option that you feel most relevant. Right. And then once you are done with that, if you have any questions until now, uh, with whatever we have covered, you can go ahead and put out that question in the Q&A section. Okay, we've just gathered one response. We have. Please feel free. This is the webinar is sort of put together so that we can help you. So if you can tell us where you're facing what issue, it will just help us 
answer that particular question and help you clarify that particular burden. We've had eight, okay, perfect. Ten. Shruti, so we've had someone on the chat, sorry, Mahesh, sorry, my bad. Mahesh says that AWS Skill Builder is something they have to subscribe for. Is it a paid? Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a free subscription. It's not a paid one. Okay. And the course is also available for free. And I think I'll just touch upon whatever Shady has commented as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Once we are done with the poll, I'll okay. answer that. Okay. We'll give it another two minutes. Please do not miss, the, miss answering the poll. Yeah. Shruti, you can view the poll result page, right? You can see the percentage of... Oh, okay. Uh, There's something called polls in the, in the bottom bar. Oh. Can you see it? I do see the poll itself. You, no, you have to go to the Zoom call. Oh, okay. Let me just do that. No, I don't think I can see it. But can you go to your Zoom screen? I, can't, I can see you share. Okay, I'll just stop sharing and go there. Or I could also, you know, share my screen and show you the responses. If that's okay. Yeah, should be fine. Let me do that. Sorry, I'm not. I... Is my no no this is not the right one. I see your Slack. Oh okay, that's weird. I think you can just share the screenshot. Screenshot is it normal? Over the mail. I have made it a post, Shruti. Can you see it now? Yeah, I think I should be able to see it now. Yeah, I'm able to see it now. Thanks. Thanks, Shruti. Perfect. Cool. Uh, so we can stop the poll now. Uh, cool. Okay. And eight percent participation, which is pretty good. Uh, I think I can end the poll now. You know that I'm the host. Yeah. Uh, so I hope all of you have voted. Uh, in the poll questions, I'll just end the poll and let us see where we are. So, uh. I think most of the questions are 100% answered as well. So let's start with the first question. Uh, it's about when you want to prepare for the cloud practitioner exam, what is it that you find the most overwhelming? And a lot of percentages around the fact that you should know about all the services, which is, which is true because there are like tons of services that are out there, definitely more than 30 to 50, I would say, that are out there and you should know everything about all those services, which is pretty overwhelming. Uh, and because if you just go through the syllabus in itself, and if you go through the videos, just in a day or two, you would realize that you're just getting confused between the different services. Uh, and the second poll has uh, mostly instructor-led training sessions and practice exams and quizzes, having the highest percentage over there. And the last one is all mixed. So that gives us a good sense of uh, what is it that you're looking for. And with that, let us continue further. So before I move on, I want to uh, 
answer a few questions which are there on the chat section. So firstly, I think the questions are around whether the test and the courses are free and AWS Skill Builder subscription, uh, whether it is free or not. So the Skill Builder subscription is free. Uh, after you take that subscription, which is subscription, which is free, you will be able to uh, enroll into different certification related courses. And most of them are free. So whatever I have looked at until now, all were free. And coming to cloud cloud practitioner related uh, course, that definitely is free. Uh, now, Shady also said that I believe the certificate is a good start, but not enough to land a junior job. This is not completely true. So how this certification plays a role for you to land a job? Let us just uh, cover that um, in, in a brief way. So whenever you are applying for a job, the first part of the job uh, of landing any job is the resume selection, right? You send your resume and it's, uh, or uh, the HRs view your LinkedIn profile and they decide whether you are uh, fit for interviewing for that job. Now, if you have the AWS certifications in your resume, that means that you have practical experience of working with AWS. And that is where that gives them the confidence that once you are on the job, uh, you would not have to be taught a lot of stuff and you already know most of it. That is where it reduces your learning curve time. So basically there is some time which has to be given for any new, uh, new incoming engineer on a job so that they learn about a lot of stuff. There is already so many things to learn about what is there in that particular organization. For example, you would have a lot of services that is written by the developers in that organization. Uh, there would be a lot of technologies that are used, the language and learning about cloud services becomes an additional add-on. So if you're already aware, of, if you're already having the certifications related to AWS, uh, this becomes your stepping stone towards landing a good job. And now when, when we talk about cloud practitioner, in order for you to gain further certifications of AWS, you might have heard that, okay, AWS Solutions Architect is like one of the very good certifications out there. But if you look at the level of solutions architect related, the syllabus of the solutions art, uh, architect certification exam, it would be so overwhelming that if you haven't done cloud practitioner, it's like uh, it would be jumping directly into the ocean. So you have to take stepping stones for becoming good at AWS cloud and cloud practitioner certification is like the first step in that direction. So, uh, Coming to that, let us get back and I'll start sharing my screen again. So as one of the polling answers was, the most overwhelming fact is that there are so many services of AWS that you should know. Now, if you just read the theory, that won't be sufficient because as I said you, if you read about two to three different types of uh, services towards the end of it, just reading won't help you because you will get confused. What will help you better is to have a practical experience with that service. Now, if I say you that, okay, S3 is a service wherein it's a distributed file system, you can go create a bucket in that you can go and create a different folders within which you can write, put out your files. And then I say you that, okay, uh, would all the files be accessible to everyone? You might have read about all of this, but then you would get confused. Uh, you are not sure whether the file will be visible or not visible. Uh, if, I, if I say that, okay, I want only a particular set of people to be able to view this folder. How do you do that? Now, when you go to the certification exam, the question would be in, on those lines that, okay, I have a, a S3 bucket in which I have five folders and I want one particular folder to be visible to this particular set of people, uh, which AWS service should I use to control that access? And uh, you would have four options. But now if you have never worked on S3, or uh, you have just read the theory about it, you would get all confused how to go about it. Some questions are also related to services. For example, let's say I want, just like the example that I gave before, I want to see the forecast for my next month's uh, bill, which 
AWS service should I use? And your options would be AWS budgets, AWS cost explorer, AWS support plans, AWS billing. And now you would be confused. All of them sound very similar. Everything related to bills, you don't know which is the forecast related service. So that is where if you actually go to the service, open AWS budget, start doing some stuff around it. And then you would realize, okay, budgets is meant for this particular purpose. And maybe you keep on revisiting it two to, two to three times and you would realize that you go to budgets when you want to do this particular thing. Uh, similarly, you keep on exploring cost explorer. Uh, the moment you see, okay, your billing is this way. Uh, and then uh, you revisit it after you get a couple of AWS bills, you would realize, okay, you generally end up landing into cost explorer when you want to do this particular thing. So that is where the practical experience, I think most of you would have already done that. If you are an AWS uh, user and you, if you have your personal account, uh, you would have realized that when you often visit some of the services, you realize exactly what does what that service is meant for, what are what are the capabilities of that service, right? Now, uh, now the question is, you have so many different services. How can you uh, go and explore everything? And do you really uh, know how do you even go about exploring it? So if you just go and explore, that also won't help you in remembering things. But if you explore it in terms of any context or in terms of any project, you would realize that you had used this particular service in that project where you wanted to achieve a particular goal. And that is how when you are using AWS services for actually uh, solving some of your problems, that is when you would be able to relate more with it. And this is where Project Pro helps you. So in Project Pro, we have courses for data engineers, data scientists, but most of the projects are on AWS. And when we are talking about that project, we say, okay, we have this particular goal in mind. Let's say, for example, we want to build a batch processing pipeline that should be queried using AWS Athena and uh, should be stitched together using, and it should be written in AMR. And now when you go about exploring with us on this project that, okay, for batch processing, we used EMR. This is how we set it up. These are all the different options available. When you set it up, this is how you run. And when your uh, final output lands in S3, you can query it using Athena. So when you actually take this journey of the project, that is when you end up using AWS services in practice. And that is what helps you uh, get a practical experience with those AWS services. And thus it increases your retention uh, memory about what that service is meant for, in what context have you used it, what all it is capable of, and how you go about uh, solving any particular problem using that AWS service. Uh, does, does that make sense? If you have any questions, uh, you can just uh, put in the Q&A section or the chat section. And I can take it now or I can take it a little later as well if I don't get much now. But feel free to keep on doing it, right? So uh, in the meanwhile, let's proceed ahead. So, so this is where when you go through this course, you would get an overview. You would understand the basics of different services, but then the retention of that knowledge won't be very high in itself because this is just video you saw through it, you got an overview and you proceeded. That is how they covered the complete course, having so many services in four hours. And truly speaking, if some five new services got introduced, they are eligible for being asked in the certification exam, but they might not even be here. So the syllabus is not just limited to this. There are many more services still in the syllabus, which might not have got covered over here, right? Now let's go on and explore the Project Pro, uh, different projects of Project Pro. So let me take you through an example. Let's take an AWS related uh, project on, so I know of a few projects, so let me just uh, help you get a walkthrough using those projects. So this is one of the projects and let's go in this section where it explains what all is used. So if you see, we have used AWS Glue, which is used for stitching together a pipeline and also for cataloging purposes. 
we have used AWS Lambda, we have used S3, we have used IAM for controlling access on the S3 buckets, on the AWS glue and so on. Then we have Athena, uh, which is an uh, analytical tool. Then we have QuickSight, which is yet another analytical tool provided by AWS. Now a simple question that, okay, I have some um, data and I want to visualize it using dashboards. Which of the AWS service would I be using? And you have options like AWS QuickSight, AWS Athena, AWS CloudWatch, and let's say AWS Lambda. And you do, and this is how the questions and the certification exams are. But you, if you have not done this practically, you would be confused that, okay, even I can query using Athena. I also see dashboards in CloudWatch, QuickSight also there are visualization option. So which is the right answer, right? But if you have actually done this in practical using some such project, you would realize what are the differences between these services. Had there been just one service solving for all of it, even this particular diagram would not have three different services, right? So each of them is meant for a different purpose. And it's only when you do the practicals that you would realize that Athena is only meant for querying. You can query and you can get the result in a tabular format. If you want to actually do some analysis and a visualization in terms of, let's say, pie chart or anything of that sort, then, then you would have to go to a quick site. And if you want to monitor whatever how your service is performing, that is where you have to go to CloudWatch. And if you want to control access to different services, that is where you have to go to IAM and so on. So this projects would give you a practical experience about different services. Let me take a couple of more examples of the few projects and then uh, we will move on to the last part uh, of Q&A. So in another five minutes, I would quickly walk you through a few more projects and explain you how you can learn a lot of things by going through the different projects. So yet another example I would like to take is around Kinesis and Flink. So let's take this project. So, okay. So now if I go to the project architecture, let's see here. So here we cover a lot of Kinesis related stuff, right? So you have Kinesis Firehost. If you have heard about Kinesis, you know that it's a streaming platform, right? You have a Kinesis queue uh, and you keep on pushing data into the queue. You know, in order to, uh, you also know that, okay, in order to take this data from the queue and push it into some uh, S3 or in some database, you use Firehost. But then if you want to run a Flink, a Flink cluster and just run some Flink related code, Kinesis also provides that. Now that is provided as under the section called as Kinesis Data Analytics. And now in order to understand what these different nitty gritties of Kinesis are, this project would come in really handy. Then air, uh, see, now you, you have this Apache Airflow. You would think about, okay, uh, how do you just run Apache Airflow cluster on AWS? But AWS provides a service out of the box called as MWA, Managed Workflows for Apache Airflow. This is a managed service by AWS for Airflow. Now, if you look at the Cloud Practitioner course, you won't have the service. But truly speaking, it exists. And, it's, uh, and you should not be surprised if you get a question on this in the Cloud Practitioner certification. So, so such services, so a lot of, if you see, there is so much of variety. This certificate covers Kinesis, Airflow, Flink. Uh, Flink is also in Kinesis, so it's not mentioned in this diagram, but if I just uh, show you this particular thing, it would have Kinesis Analytics, which is nothing but Flink uh, showing there. And then if, um, and then MWAA, and when you actually open all the services, play around with it, uh, you would, keep on gaining more and more confidence. And if you, uh, I mean, you can just go through one of this and you would really see the difference between your knowledge of AWS prior to the project and post you have done the project. You would see a tremendous difference between your level of confidence in dealing with that particular AWS service. Let's take yet another example, and this would be uh, mostly the last example for now. Uh, let's take an example of 
IoT, which is pretty new in the market. So CDK, there is one where you have CDK as well as IoT. So let's take this example. So CDK and cloud formation are two services which is meant for infrastructure as code. Uh, I don't know how many people of you are aware as infrastructure as code, but basically let me just give you a brief about it. So whenever you want to have some infrastructure deployed, let's say for example, you want EC2 instance to be uh, spawned, or if you want an EMR cluster to be spawned, you do it using either CLI or using AWS console, but in production, when you want to launch such clusters again and again, you don't rely on AWS CLI or console because then if you do it manually every time, you might miss out on some steps. You might write wrong spellings or the, it's prone to manual error. So that is where infrastructure as code comes into picture. And what does that mean? That you can write infrastructure using code. And that means how infrastructure has to be provisioned, uh, what all are the different things that needs to be spawned in order to spawn something. For example, if you want just EMR cluster, you should have a S3 bucket where logging can be put into place. You need certain rules that has access to uh, EC2 that has access to, if you know it's called as EC2 default role, EMR EC2 default role and all of it. And all of that can be written as a code. And that is infrastructure as code. And there are two AWS services doing that. One of them is the cloud formation service. And another is AWS CDK, which is mostly a library. Uh, long form cloud development kit. So difference between cloud formation and CDK, cloud formation is all config based and developers are not very used to writing so much configs. Uh, so you want something which is, uh, which can be coded in some language like TypeScript and that is where CDK library comes into picture. Uh, so yeah, that's all about CDK. But now if you see this, this is yet another service where we are, yet another project where we are covering so many services. There is this systems manager, uh, it's a systems session manager, SSM. Then there is EC2, EC2 is well known. MySQL DB, which could be, uh, which could be spawned out of the RDS service. And then there's Kinesis again, and then there is IoT related service. So AWS also has an IoT related service and it, IoT is Internet of Things. And this service in itself also has a lot of nitty gritties around it. But if you see this project, if you just do one hands-on of this project, you would be confident on another four to five services. So yeah, so this is how you can gain confidence, you can keep on doing different projects and you would get yourself familiarized with so many AWS services, thus taking you one step further towards getting uh, certified in the cloud practitioner exam, right? So, so yeah, I think that's all from the presentation perspective. I think I'll uh, open up the session for Q&A. Feel free to put out your questions in either the chat section or the Q and A section. Okay, so Admore has a uh, has a very good question over there. So it says that this is why I'm failing to follow Project Pro because you have to type what you want. What if you have no ideas? What are you going to type? So let's say if you are like a beginner in the data engineering world and you are not, uh, you don't know about any projects. So, but now there are a couple of ways. Now comes your goal, whether you have come for a data engineering stuff or whether you have come for an AWS stuff. So uh, what I would suggest is when you come to this project pro dashboard, you have this learning curve, which is given to you, which is called as just one second, hold on. So projects, this is the project path bit. So if you are coming in for the first time, you don't know what you want to search, go to this project path, go to whether you are interested in data science or big data. So let's say I'm interested in big data, which is nothing but data engineering. So wait, what happened? My, somehow the net is a little slower. And then, okay, I have already selected whatever I wanted. So this is showing, let's go to data science. Uh, you can actually edit it. 
So this I have never selected. So you can just select that, what is your current role? So if you are new to uh, completely IT world, you select as a fresher, but you are a software developer, but new to data science, then you select data science, uh, software engineer or developer. And accordingly, what your present role is, you select your current role, right? Let's say I select software engineer. Choose what you already know. So let's say if I already know about some things, then I can select that, but I'm new, let's say. I don't know about any of it. So just leave this blank and choose what you want to learn. Given that I'm looking at data science, let me select classification, regression. I think I'm interested in all of them, just select all, right? You can select whatever you want. So, so let's say deep learning, I know is a very advanced concept. I don't want it. Uh, NLP, I don't want it, but I want some basic stuff. I don't want computer vision. Uh, and let's say, okay. And now you say, get your path. So if you do this, you would get a series of projects uh, given to you. Uh, check out your learning section. Now, so this is, this is what it generated for me. That I should go through this project, then this project, then this project. If you see it did some uh, some things around this as well, like uh, around the arrangement of projects. If you see part one has come before followed by part two. So it did, uh, it scanned through whatever projects there are. It arranged, if you see even the level of the project is mentioned. So it started with easy projects followed by some moderate projects in the middle and so on. So it did that thing for you. It gave you out of the box how, which are the series of projects that you should be going through. Similarly with big data, uh, I have already done that thing. So it's, it's already giving me whatever based on my selection. But if you want to edit it, there is an edit button over here and then you can edit whatever you want. I hope that answers your question at more. And this is how you can go about uh, the Project Pro uh, platform, right? So, okay, Shraddha, this is for you. I think you already answered. Uh, sounds good. This was around where can we get recording of today's session? And um, Project Pro team would be sending out the recording to all of you folks. So let's come to the chat section. If there are any more questions, please show lab to pass AWS practitioner exam. So there are some labs or some mock questions given by AWS itself. And it comes over here, but if you're interested, uh, the Project Pro team can also work on coming up with more mock questions or mock examinations, but coming to this, so let's go to the AWS. So, okay, fine, fair enough. Let me just show you what to do next, not here. So this was your certification, uh, AWS Cloud Practitioner, the exam page. And this is where it gives you exam prep standard course and... Uh, there is one mock exam as well, which AWS provides, but you can anytime reach out to the Project Pro team. And if you are interested, see, this is the Play Cloud Quest and it has some exams. I have myself never tried it, so it says start learning now, uh, but there are some mocks given by AWS. If you just explore this cloud practitioner related some links, you would get it. Mostly it's this link itself, uh, but if you're interested, uh, from our side to get more uh, mock exams, you can just let us know and we can do that for you. Okay, uh, thanks Sachin for the compliment. And what else do we have? What do you know about the AWS data engine that is just in beta right now? Data engineering certification, okay. I registered to take the exam, but I cannot find any results online for training or practice exams to use. Um, so related to AWS data engineering certification, uh, it's still in beta as you rightly said. Um, it is, it's something which I feel is still in development phase and they are just experimenting things out because even I saw the console is a bit broken. I myself wanted to take one certification on data engineering, but yeah, things are broken. I, I can't help you much here. Uh, but yes, the solutions architect and all is pretty well established and is there for from quite a long time. Data engineering, I think just give it a couple of months and they should be good over there. Uh, 
how do we remember small details about the service, like the different types of S3 buckets or the different pricing models of EC2? Uh, when it comes to pricing models, the questions won't be very, very uh, nitty gritty specific. It would be on a little bit top level because almost all the services have a different pricing model, but at least you should know the basics. For example, when we talk about S3 pricing, S3 pricing is based on two things. One is uh, the amount of storage that you're using and the amount of IO that is happening between uh, the S3 service and the other services. And some other nitty gritties about on the general level that if you are doing IO between the different folders of the same S3 bucket, then you aren't charged anything. If you're doing it within the same region, then also you aren't charged anything. So this top level things is what you should know. But when you talk about, okay, how much is this particular thing charged? No one will ask you that. So you should just know how any particular service is priced or built uh, and what, uh, what contributes towards your bill and what doesn't contribute towards your bill. Uh, so this is also one of the practical aspects of AWS itself. You use it, you get bills, and you realize that, okay, this one cost it. So this is the practical concept, but I would definitely not suggest you to go that way. Just do a little bit of reading, and you should be good enough related to pricing. Just do a reading about what, what ends up contributing towards your bill, and this would help you in both the ways. Not just it would help you clear the exam, it would also help you keep your cost under control. So yeah, lame joke, but sorry. <laughs> uh, any learning path for associate solution architect exam? Uh, I think we can cover it in one of the later webinars, but like this was the starting one and we definitely wanted people to get started on this certification journey and we took the cloud practitioner one. But most of the things remain the same. Now, solutions architect is like the next step. It is way harder than the cloud practitioner one. Uh, so, so as of now, it's out of scope of this webinar. But yes, if you are interested, just reach out to our team and we can arrange one webinar on the solution architect related exam. Even the associate solution architect one. Uh, do you also go in details in explaining the solution? I think mo most of the later questions are around that, but uh, that is out of the scope for this webinar at least. So yeah, I think that mostly covers all the questions as well. Oh, there are Q&A also has a couple of questions. Any learning path? Uh, that's fine. Data analytics certification. Uh, I think for data analytics certification, it would stay on the similar lines, but if you want a specific guidance, uh, please reach out because data analytics in itself is like a little bit uh, specific domain in itself. So cloud practitioner being generic, generic one, uh, it's easy to address the complete audience. For data analytics, I think, uh, uh, Nyanam, you can please reach out to the Project Pro team and we can have a session for data analytics certification. It will not be a webinar in itself because might be uh, a few candidates might be interested so we can have a session for them. Yeah, I think uh, Shraddha, mostly uh, we are done with all the questions. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Shruti. Uh, I've shared a feedback form link on the chat section. Sorry, in the chat section. So. Uh, it'd be great if you could let us know, you know, what you'd like to see in the future. So it wouldn't take too much time. Um, we'd give it maybe five minutes if you're okay, Shruti. And, and we'd also like wait for a couple of questions, you know, meanwhile. Okay, sounds good. I can wait for a couple of questions. Okay, so we'd wait for five minutes for questions. And meanwhile, please feel free to fill in the feedback. And I would like to thank every one of you for taking some time on a Saturday to join us for this webinar. Uh, and I hope this webinar helps you in your in starting your journey with the certifications. We have Rajiv uh, should be saying he's also interested in data analytics. So any okay. okay. Yeah, Shraddha, you can please take a note of people who are interested in some particular certifications. Okay. And uh, Rajiv, can you ping me your email ID? Rajiv, and who else was interested in a 
Perfect. Thanks, Nanam. I will get back to you. We have one more email address. Oh, nice. Okay. Rehan. Okay. Uh, Rehan, is it for data analytics thing? Certification? Cloud practitioner. Okay, sure. Oh, okay, perfect. Did anybody else also want to give me their email IDs for? We shared the presentation with you, the, the presentation that Shruti has sort of developed, created. I uh, post the webinar, we'll share the recording as well as the presentation for you to go through. Kumaran, Kumaran, what would it be? What certification would you be interested in? Very interesting. Oh, it was for the cloud practitioner, Shruti. Kumaran, is it? Okay. And we have a Ram Lasha for data analyst certification. I think what would help is if you type your email ID and then what certificate you're interested in, you know, that will be helpful. Rehan says, do we have any projects related to AWS architecture? Shruti, do we? Uh, AWS, do we have any projects related to AWS? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, Rehan, all the projects that I was talking about are all AWS specific, I, which I showed you a couple of them. But let me just give you, see, if I just put AWS, I have 10 projects coming up right in the in this thing. But there are many more where AWS is not even mentioned, but there are projects on AWS. So, uh, when you talk about AWS architecture, each project is based on some problem statement. And we don't have a generic one like the cloud practitioner course that I showed you, but this is learning of different AWS services from the problem statement perspective and solving for that problem statement. So we cover different services in different projects. Actually, there are many more. It's just that either they don't have AWS directly in the name of the project or it's the limitation of the options that just show up over here. So if I just search for AWS and you would have many more. Did anybody if you want to, you know, sort of ask Shruti a direct question, I can, you know, sort of unmute you and you can speak to her if you wish. We have a couple of minutes, I suppose. Yeah, we have five more minutes, Shruti, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. That should be okay. Okay, feel free to raise your hands, I'll unmute you and then you can go ahead and ask Shruti a direct question. Meanwhile, I've also noted down on all your email IDs, we'll get back to you with a solution. received seven responses on our feedback form request all of you to be super helpful we could come up with you know more webinars on what you wish to see i'm sending over the link again i think it would roughly take a couple of maybe 30 seconds to fill it
Okay then, um, any more questions? We'll wrap up if nobody has any more questions. All right then, thanks, uh, thanks Shruti for you know, enlightening our audience with how to go about the basics of an AWS cloud certification. And we have plans on covering the next stages of the, you know, the AWS certifications and basically narrow down into, you know, let's say a solutions architect or a data analytics certification, you know, what goes into the nitty gritties of the specifics basically. Uh, thanks audience for taking the time on a Saturday uh, to you know join this call and I'll be sharing the recording as well as the presentation with you. So yeah and I've also dropped in my email ID if you have any further questions or if you need some information you can drop me an email. Uh, Alright then, uh, thanks everybody, thanks again Shruti, have a good evening. Thank you, thank you all, bye. Bye.